Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, today I'm gonna to be doing something a little bit different. Not gonna be doing my typical RC review. This is gonna be a quick little review of a handheld gaming console that's an emulator. It can emulate some of your classic consoles and handheld devices. Because if you're like me and you've been into RC for, like, I'm 48 now, getting old, and I've been into RC for over 30 years, but I also played video games. I don't play them that much anymore, but I thought it'd be cool to get my hands on this because these are not ex very expensive. I think this is around $30. And it lets you play all kinds of your classic handheld and gaming consoles. It can emulate them on this little handheld device. It kind of looks like a, I think a PlayStation Vita. I never had one of those. Or the PSP, I guess, was similar as well. But We'll see how this, what we think of this thing. It's got a 5.1 inch screen. It's got a type of surround sound audio here. Um, it can do H.264, a video codec, and it says HD ready though. I don't, the screen itself is not actually, I don't believe up to HD um, resolution. On the side here, it gives you uh, some more information. Hopefully this will show up in the camera. Um, let's see, we already covered that. Here's some of the things that it does claim it can emulate. The CPS, I believe, is the Capcom play system. The Cap, Some Capcom games, it must have been, I don't know if they had their own system, it must, if they did it was pretty rare. The GBA is a Game Boy Advance. You got the Game Boy Color, the Game Boy, the NES. I believe that some of these are like the Famicom, which was just um, Nintendo's name over in Japan. The Super Famicom, which was Super Nintendo. And then you've got, I think the MD was, is maybe the, um, the Sega, the Mega Drive. Um, so it, this, will, this will emulate the Sega Genesis. It also does a Neo Geo, and that's, I don't see that listed on here. And it does the PS1, the PlayStation 1. Now, I've had trouble, I don't know if there's a certain type of file format it needs because uh, a, a dot bin file it will try to load and doesn't the other ex most common extension for PlayStation 1 uh, ROMs it just says invalid file format but I saw a review where a guy did load Crash Bandicoot I believe from the PlayStation I think it was from the PlayStation 1 but it might have been from you know one of these ha more newer handheld systems but it's, it's supposed to be able to uh, load the PlayStation 1, but I've not had any luck with that yet. Those games that get to be 3D is where this thing starts to struggle at frame rate. Um, the, just the ones that are more advanced or newer game systems. So it says it can watch 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128 bit arcade games. So that's getting pretty advanced. I think the PlayStation was 32. I know that the uh, Nintendo 64 is 64, but that's not claimed to be one that they can emulate because it has a built-in emulator. So that has to be able to let me know how, know how to load and emulate the games. That's one type of emulator software built into this little console. It can support SD cards or TF cards up to 32 gigs. That's how you can sort of side load some other games because it does come preloaded with a couple hundred. And you can do recording, you know, it's got music, it's got a camera uh, on the back. It's not, not very good, but it does include a camera. You know, look at photos, and it does have an output to your TV if you want to play it on a TV. All right, so that pretty much covers what's on the box. Let's go ahead now, and I'll take out everything in the box to show you what's in the box. We'll be right back. All right, so here, here is everything out of the box. Obviously, here's the gaming console. We'll go over in a, in a minute. We've got... They've had two of what appears to be identical instruction manuals that are not very good. So you're going to have to do a lot of exploring on your own, or hopefully this video uh, will help you guys out if you would decide to get this uh, little console. You get a USB uh, data cable here that you could also use to charge. I think this would be to let you access you know, the internal memory of this, because I didn't mention on this one yet, but this one is a 16 gigabytes so it's got a ton of storage in this thing which is pretty cool for the price you get an audio video cable here this is your rca your yellow is your video red and white is your right and left audio and that kind of goes into your headphone jack on the top and that will actually send out video and audio to a tv as long as it's got these older type of rca plugs they call these um, some newer tvs might not have that because that is old school 
And here is uh, uh, some cheap headphones. So your little earbuds you want to put in if you want to, you know, it's kind of cool. They're not, don't expect much from these, but it's nice they include them. And this is your wall charger. Um, this is going to charge it quicker though. Man, I tell you what, the charge time, I had it plugged in. It was dead when I got it, but I had it plugged in all, I had it plugged in for eight hours and it still says it's not completely charged. It makes me think the battery meter just might be very accurate. It's probably charged. Maybe it just thinks it's not quite all the way charged on. It has a little red light on here that lets you know it's plugged in, but I don't think that will go green when it's charged. It, it shows you on the actual device when you plug it in with the power turned on, it, you can select charge or play in charge. If you want to play it while it's plugged in, which of course is going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, um, charge a lot slower. So here you've got your directional pad here, but this direction, you're going to see my reflection here <laughs> in the uh, screen. But the directional pad actually isn't one piece. It's four separate buttons, so it doesn't work as well as a regular directional. Here's your analog um, joystick on your left. Um, and this works okay. I use this quite a bit, it's, it's, but it's not perfect. And here is an escape button to get out of the games. You've got your Y, X, and B, A over here. So you got these buttons work just fine. In your right, like what we usually like your, uh, you know, your camera look, you know, your right analog stick. And you have a start and a select button. And then on the top here, you got your right and left <clears throat> upper bumper you know if you if a game uses that here is the headphone or audio video out jack right here this is like an on and off switch but it's like it's got two of them there's also one here sometimes when I flip this to the left it'll turn on but other times you have to press the power button over here but if this switches off to the right I don't think it'll work at all it's almost like some sort of a master power or so i don't know it's very bizarre so you have to use one of the two i can't tell you which one this one seems to work more often than not as long as it switches to the left and then this one will turn it back off by holding it in here is the tf or micro sd card slot i already got one in there and i already have a couple games on there aside from the built-in game so i'll show you both of those in a minute guys here's your mini usb to uh access to internal memory or to charge it and your volume up and down here and on the back is your camera if you wanted to use that camera and it does have two speakers it sounds to me like i get sound through both but it's louder off to the side it may not actually have one review i watched for a similar one the person said it just had one speaker and that may be the case but it sounds okay it just if it's not both you're not going to get stereo out of these speakers so let's go ahead and let's turn it on and let's give you guys an idea what's all in preloaded. So, so as you can see, I flipped it to the left. This little light here is your power or charging. It will blink like purple, red, or something that's charging. So I'm going to have to hold that power button in here. So here's the power button. It should come on. There we go. I got like a Tekken or some sort of a fighting. I wasn't into that particular game, but... I go to the startup menu and there we go. Now you've got this, it says card in, so it's reading the micro SD card. And you've got your video, music, photo options. If you want to access that stuff on your device, you can see it's showing me about half battery, which I would hope that's not accurate. Ebooks, a browser to let you browse into the internal memory for games. We'll show you that in a minute. Uh, audio recorder or stopwatch and your settings. And there's just a few settings. It's really not even important to go over that. And then I guess this would be to do your video recorder camera and your photo, which I've gotten into that. But boy, I tell you what, it's hard to get back out of that menu and it's not something you're gonna probably wanna mess with at this thing, so. Now, if I go up, you can use either one of these to navigate. You'll see that? It's easier to just use the directional pad. You've got some pre-built games in this and some categories. So here, I don't know, you got WOF, SF2, I'm not familiar with some of these games. The King of Fighters, Metal Slug, Fate Fury. You see here, the Punisher game down here. Uh, a Fight, Dino. These are gonna be some older, you know, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, or Nintendo games. I didn't see any Sega Genesis or um, games on here. 
So some of them, you know, I don't know if it has any Genesis games, but you can definitely load those and play them. So let's go to the next screen. This one says games. This one says game GBA, Game Boy Advance, and arcade games. You know, they, they have, you know, the games, we'll, have, we'll show you here. It's got some games in here. Oop. I can move over and then press B, and then A lets you back out of menus, okay? So press B on games. And then go to your directory list, and here you want to go to internal memory. And here's the game that's loaded underneath there. Super Street Fighter, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's only, you know, you can see it's already repeated. About seven, eight games there. Castlevania game. So it's a little bit, you know, it's, it's a little redundant because you'll go back, back out of this. You go to another one like Game Boy Advance, and it'll list some NES games. So I think maybe those are games that were emulated, or, or not emulated, but they were Nintendo games that were playable on the Game Boy Advance when they ported, or they mo moved it over to the Game Boy Advance. Again, we'll go to the directory list. Now this list 12,400, no. It, I think, man, you got 12,400 games to go through. No, it, it, it cycles, it repeats. It goes up to about a hundred or so, and then it'll just start cycling the same games over. So you can see the games here that the GBA are Game Boy Advance extensions. But some of them, like this, BattleCity.NES is an, a, reg, a, a first, you know, the NES, the regular original Nintendo. But I guess maybe it was also a Game Boy Advance, but I don't know. It could just be they just threw them. It doesn't really matter because the same emulator and software on this will load all these games. And then if you back out, you've got this arcade games. And again, you've got the same, a big list. These say zip, and I don't know if that's a zip file. I think it would be. It'd be odd it could load a different zip file. Because I don't believe that extension would be shared with other software. But it, it, it loads them. You see, this is a different list. This is 8,300. Again, this just cycles through. There's roughly, I did, you know, around 200 games or so on here. But it looks like you've got you know 20,000 games. I think they're doing that just to make it look more appealing to someone who's not paying attention. So, and then you have these preset shortcuts to some of the games that again, like on the first screen, the games that they think you're probably going to be more popular. So let's go and load up Super Mario Brothers. So go to that one, press A, then do on your restart. That actually is how you start it as well. It's going to load. And then you may have to use some of your start buttons. It, the A button doesn't always work within the menus. And there we go. Oh. Used to play this one, man. It's a little bit, feels like a little bit on ice skates. <laughs> I'm also playing this through the screen on my camera and not actually looking so as you can see i ran into them because i'm mean, there's probably a bit of delay i'm playing it through my camcorder screen because i can't see over my camera but yeah this one works pretty good now some of the emulation is not perfect so i'm going to get out of the game and press escape over here you can also then go and save your progress if you want to which i imagine it's going to save you at that level then you just hit b to back out so it, sometimes the music plays too quick or it slows down. It, your frame rates can really slow, you know, how fast it plays. If you get a game that's more graphically advanced, your side scrollers, your two dimensional, like that one, play like Super Mario Brothers, plays pretty good. You've got Contra down here, another classic. Let's load that up. And that one plays pretty well from what I saw. But the ones that get more 3D, you know, um, which would be more like a PS1 game if you get to load, those don't. Those don't emulate very well. They get pretty low frame rates, probably, I'm guessing, down to you know 20 frames per second or something like that. So let's see how we start. Let's go ahead and press start. I wonder if the A, B, I don't know, is the A, B, B, A, select, start. I forget that code you used to be able to do. You could do to uh, give yourself 30 lives. <laughs> I see how I shoot. Ooh, 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 ooh. I won this game many years ago. This was a classic. You upgrade your gun there to rapid fire. 
The bridge blows up. All right, guys, I don't need to, this isn't a game uh, review, so let's go ahead and we'll exit out of that. So yeah, those are pretty cool. So now, if you want to access a game in those lists there, you just go down and do the same thing, press A and then restart and start. Now, if you want to access a game, you put in your memory card, and I've got that micro SD card in here, 32 gig actually, which is the max capacity it will load. Go down to your browser, and then you go to your card directory. And you can probably do it in those other screens because you saw a while ago, card directory was listed under each one of those, under the games, arcade games, and the GBA. And you should be able to load it there. And I've loaded something like some of my favorites, like NHL 94, probably the most famous tournament multiplayer style hockey game that was just great. And you press that, it's gonna open file, and that was a that was a Super Nintendo game. And I played this last night and it emulates this really well. Seems it's a little bit maybe slow to load it, it seems like. But once you get into this, then it's just it's really, really fun. Let's see if I can get through the menu. I'm just gonna go ahead and try to start it here, playing as Montreal, just so you guys can see. I think, you know, I used the, the actual analog joystick to do it. I felt that that gave me a little better control because this is not an actual full D-pad here. And I felt like I did pretty good though. I feel like doing the move, they call it, with the hockey stick is a little, isn't quite as good as a real Nintendo, of course. So let's see if I can. I'm trying to shoot it on goal. Hard to do this, guys, and be able to keep the uh, game controller in the uh, screen. All right, so that lets you guys see the hockey. The hockey works really good. Let's go ahead and show you one more. Um, well, Super Mario Kart. That one actually loads until it gets to the game. It has a split screen and it just shows you off the, the course. And the little robot pick, on the cloud picks you up and says you're off the course and it doesn't work. So that one doesn't work. I didn't try Super Mario, Mario Circuit. And Super Baseball Simulator was a classic game where you could build your own teams and give guys attributes and power. I actually won't go into that. That actually worked just fine. I emulated that last night on here and actually went through an inning was able to hit and everything so that works just fine so yeah that's pretty much what this thing is it can emulate these i would stick with the nes in a super nintendo um S snes or the sega um the game boy game boy advance let's see if we can do a game boy real quick i would not try to go up to the playstation if you can even get it to load because i couldn't even get into load so let's just see. Let's try Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or let's try let's try Crash Bandicoot for the Game Boy Advance. This time was I did look at it. So this is a side scroll. So this is not the one I saw a guy play online. So I think you know it's going to emulate the Game Boy Advance games pretty good. The Game Boy Color, which would be I think even before this, the Game Boy is the original black and white one like Tetris and you played on that one, you know, and that one should emulate just fine. It's crazy how long it took just to get in these games. Yeah. You can do your spin and knock the boxes. I never really, I didn't really ever play Crash Bandicoot, so I don't really know how to, I know this is a very popular game. I think in the Uncharted game, when I mean, you could play, you could play this. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing here. So, all right, so it works, works pretty good with that one. All right, guys, well, I think that should be enough. This video is getting to be pretty long the way it is. So we're already over 20 minutes here. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think for around thirty dollars, this is worth it. Just be mindful; it's not going to play every game perfect. And the controls are not great. They're not terrible, 
but they're not they're they can be a little sloppy so don't expect to be able to play this these classic games as well as you could on the real consoles or the original handheld devices so just keep that in mind but i think for you know 30 to 40 dollars i couldn't complain there's a bunch of these out there there's some better ones this is one of the newer cheapest cheapest ones if you if you you know if you just don't want to spend much money and take a shot i think this is worth it i, I don't see any glaring problems with it to where I, you know if the games were unplayable then i would be like yeah it's not worth it but they, they are playable it's just not every one is going to be perfect you can play a lot of games load a lot of games the sounds decent the screens just fine for my liking uh, so just keep that in mind if you're interested in this i'll include a purchase link i got this this came from banggood so that's where you can get it i imagine you can get these on amazon or ebay as well though it's probably going to be cheapest from banggood so if you're interested check that link out otherwise guys stay tuned i got several other things uh, coming here that we're going to review back to the traditional stuff i'll show you real quick i've got this uh the cessna airplane that just came in with this along with the handheld i'm going to review this is my first ever plane so i'm going to review that um i don't have i don't think i have it right by my side it's down in the chair there but i got the tiny hawk 2 came in so i didn't get that set up and do some practice flights and we'll do a review of the tiny hawk 2 and i've got a big rc brushless jeep coming that should be here next week i'm going to review that one and the sg i forget what the, the the beast the beast drone i don't know if it's i forget what, I forget what its number is but it's a new beast drone that has a brushless uh, two axis gimbal on it uh, that is the new thing now they're going to start putting these gimbals on these drones the problem is up to this point none of them worked well on these cheap ones the best one i've seen is the E Sheen or the Sea Fly Faith. The rest of them are not that doing that well. We'll see how the Beast Drone does, but that's going to be the new one. That one's still in pre order. It should ship here in the next week or two. So, sometime next month, I should be able to get a review for you guys for the new Beast Drone with the new uh, brushless, uh, the new two axis gimbal on that thing. We'll see how it compares to like my Metavish, which was a beast drone style you know drone that didn't have a gimbal and it was terrible on the filming so hopefully it'll be a big improvement over the original beast drone which didn't have any kind of act you know any uh you know gimbal on it all right guys that wraps up the review of this uh, x9 plus gaming console hope you enjoyed a little bit something different and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you know when i do upload new videos and as always guys have a wonderful day the power of the dark side, side, side.